All right, so we have a little switch here. This is PJ Riley. I am in the booth here. And I am here with Caleb Kirby. There we are, Caleb, right there. <laughs> Coach for the University of the Cumberlands. Uh, so we're filling in now for Greg and Darren uh, taking over. Caleb, first off, tell us a little bit about your program. Uh, we have a really good program with Legion Archery Level. Uh, we've, been in, we've been in existence for, I think this is the eighth year of competition. And we've just been climbing and climbing every year. And, uh, we have a really good set of shooters. Um, a lot of people from up in this area, we uh, joke about it being Lancaster South sometimes. <laughs> and um, we're in Williamsburg, Kentucky, in the Mid-South Conference, so we, we do our best to get noticed on the national level just as much. All right, well, Caleb, first up here, we've got the Youth Male Recurve Division. Uh, this is always a tight competition. A lot of good competitors here. We're gonna go out to Rob on the field. Okay, welcome back to the 2020 Lancaster Archery Classic. Our next division is Youth Male Recurve. And our fourth place qualifier is Joseph Scarborough from Cumming, Georgia. Joseph's been shooting for six years. He is a member of the US, USA Archery Team, and he's a recent member of the Youth World Team in Madrid, Spain. Let's give it up for Joseph Scarborough. Competing against Joseph is Ben Hur, our third place qualifier from Chula Vista, California. He's been shooting for three years and he has been a resident athlete at the Olympic Training Center. Let's give it up for Ben. Ben, welcome. Would you like to shoot first or second? First, and would you like to shoot left stage or right stage? Right. right stage, shooting first. So we're getting our rules from Judge Larry Wise. I expect this to be a really good match. These guys are both wearing USA jerseys. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, Caleb, as we're starting here, why don't you tell us, this is our first um, recurve match. Tell us about the equipment that we're looking at here. Okay, so you're, you're looking at a um, recurve bow, obviously. I mean, you've got customizable limbs for each riser. Um, a lot of it depends on what kind of poundage the shooter's wanting to pull. And then you've got clicker that helps make sure that they're at the same expansion point every single time. Um, make sure they can really get precise on their adjustments as they're shooting here. And then you'll see a lot of the recurvers shooting skinny arrows as opposed to bigger shafts like you would with the compound guys because Ten. they're a lot easier to tune in a recurve bow than you would with a with a larger shaft arrow. Right, we're seeing long front stabilizers, V-bars out the back where uh, the last few matches we were seeing a single style Nine, side right. rod, but here they're running V-bars, two on each side. Yeah, alignment is really important in the recurve class. And I'm sure that those V-bars really help each shooter customize theirs to help their alignment as best they can. Just heard the coach for Joseph saying strong shot. These guys both look really calm up on the stage. 10, 6 o'clock. Might see a little bit more shaking right, as they draw back, but they look pretty calm Let's standing up there up right now. For these two fine young gentlemen. Take it out to Rob. Joseph, I've known you for several years. A finer young man you will not meet. Uh, he's, a, he's an incredible guy. Uh, shoots with my son, Connor. And, uh, you know, you have uh, come a long way, and you're shooting at a world-class level right now. Uh, welcome and congratulations on making Likes to Archery Stave, Joseph. Thank you, Rob. Okay, let's look at his setup. Looks like he's shooting uh, one of the brand new Hoyt Formula XI bows. He's got uh, Hoyt Velos limbs. Those are bamboo core. The Biter uh, plunger, Excel sight. He's shooting ramrod stabilizers and a Venom, uh, Black Mamba Venom tag, tab with Easton, um, the, the new Easton recurve arrow. So congratulations, it looks like you're doing well with those. Let's look at our scores after the first end. Ben has a lead, 31-27. Things can change in a hurry. 
Let's give it up for these guys. They shoot at 11, I want to hear it. All right, so we're going into the second end here. Ben's got a 31-27 lead. And we've seen kind of uh, the sights that these guys use. We've seen kind of a, a mix of things so far in this compound, which is unusual, but they're gonna be, ha they may have a dot. They may have just an open Ten circle. They may have a lens with no magnification. Yep. I mean, these guys shoot, there are a lot of different preferences in the recurve class. It looks like Ben's shooting the larger shaft arrows like we were talking about just Ten. a second ago as opposed to the skinny ones. I'm sure he's pulling a lot more weight than most of them. Yeah. To get those to tune out exactly how he wants. Ten. So we should note here, uh, this is our first recurve match, but the distance has not changed. We're still shooting 18 meters, basically 20 yards. The target hasn't changed, same target. So everything we've been seeing up till now, nothing has changed except the equipment. Yep. I believe that caught an 11 to the left. Justin's got two good arrows downrange so far. 11. Just got a third. Ben looks really strong mm -hmm. in his shooting. Look at that stabilizer. Nice and steady. Eight. Oh, threw one out. All right. Let's go, go to Rob. to Ben. Catch up with him. Ben, uh, you've been living in California, uh, training at the Olympic Training Center uh, with uh, one of the, the world's best archer currently, uh, Brady Ellison and uh, Jack Williams and several others. Um, you certainly uh, working hard at your archery. Uh, tell the folks about how many arrows you shoot a day. Uh, right now it's about 200, but when it goes to outdoor, maybe three to 400 a day. That's a lot. And uh, how much weight are you holding on your fingers when you shoot each arrow? 51. 51 pounds times 400 shots a day. Let's give Ben a hand. That's a lot of effort. Okay, it looks like we're ready. Let's look at things at the halfway point. Looks like we've got 62-56 uh, match. That's only six points. Things can swing in a hurry with that 11 ring. All right, so you heard Rob talk about uh, Ben and Joseph both training at the Olympic Center in Chula Vista. That's because this is an Olympic year, big mm -hmm. year. Uh, men's and women's team we need uh, to send to Tokyo for the 2020 Summer Olympics. We currently only have one woman's spot and one men's spot secured. So going to work on that. Yeah, I'm sure these guys are both Olympic hopefuls Nine. being at the training center right now. Joseph, Joseph's pulling 51 pounds, I think he just told Nine. Rob, which is which is kind of mind-blowing to me. Unbelievable. All that weight on his fingers. The yep. compound guys might have been holding, you know, anywhere from the mid-teens into the 20s on a release. He's holding Ten. it on his fingers. Yep. And like he said, shooting that many arrows a day, I'm sure that gets very hard on your body <laughs> after a while. 10-9 Ten, ten liner, Absolutely. I believe he caught. Looks like a 10, 10, 10 there, maybe. Looking really steady right here. There you go. 11, 10 liner. There, there you go. go. Okay, let's give these guys a hand. All right, hand to Rob. Joseph, your shots look good and strong. I'd like to uh, give you the opportunity to give a shout out to uh, those that have helped you, family, coaches, and whatnot, uh, who have helped you among, along your journey? Well, to be honest, I call them my village because every, every good person has a village behind them, and that would be my family members, and to be honest, my coach and my girlfriend's family. They, they took me to a lot of international shoots, uh, to Canada, Australia, to train and practice outside of the States with other archers who are more advanced. Very good. Okay, go ahead and gather your arrows. I think we're about ready. Looks like we've got a five point, six point differential still. 91, 85. This will be the last end. 
All right, we're back here. So as we're talking about Joseph Scarborough with those larger diameter arrows, I uh, was speaking to Brady Ellison the other day. He shoots a larger diameter, but what he said is when he gets nervous, if he misses with those, something's off, it's a bigger miss. Yeah. He can have more mistakes with those skinny arrows and they'll stay in the tent. Yeah, I would imagine the skinny arrows are way more forgiving, especially under pressure with nerves and Say that's one of the reasons why you don't see a lot of people shoot the big arrows. Exactly. Yeah. Ben just looks so relaxed. Yeah. Through a nine there, but he's been pounding so far. Yeah. It's been a really good match up to this point. Eleven. There we go. Good that's shot. It's a good way to answer back right there, Joseph. 11 for Ben. <laughs> <laughs> but there Ben was like, I can do that too. <laughs> this match is going to go to Ben. Okay. Let's go out to Ron. Looks as though uh, Joseph gave it a, a good run. But it looks like you may come up just short, 122, 116. It's good for fourth place, $250. Congratulations, Joseph. <laughs> Hope to see you again back here next year. Definitely, you definitely will see me back here next year. I want to give a special call out to uh, Joseph's mother, Sandra, sitting back here, and his coach, Jim White, at home. Congratulations. Our next competitor, second place qualifier, Jun Sa Oh, Jun Sa Oh from Hannondale, Virginia. That's in the Washington, D.C. area. Been shooting for four years. Give it up. Jun Sa has just recently set a new world record. Welcome, Jun Sa. Would you like to shoot first or second? Uh, first. And would you shoot, like to shoot right or left? Right side. Right side, okay. Bounces Ben over to the left. Give you a few moments to get set up. So this is a little gamesmanship that's uh, kind of unique to the Lancaster Archery Classic. You don't want an archer to get comfortable in one spot because then they can get into a groove. So the incoming archer has the right to bump that archer over. In you know, in the long run, it's the same distance, same everything, but maybe it gets them off their game a little bit. Yeah, I would say that making people switch sides really messes a little bit with their mind, kind of getting that middle edge just a little bit. And it's different footing, so you have to adjust to it just as easily as they're having to adjust to being on stage first, too. Nine. Comes out with a nine. Yeah, the light could be hitting them different now. Um, a lot of variations that could change. And like you were saying, I'm sure comf comfort plays a whole big role in that, too, because, I mean, you want them to come out and be on the same level level playing field as you and make them move spots is just a way of doing that. Oh, and there we go. I mean, he'd been pretty solid in the gold up till there. Ben Hur. 11. June to O. Oh. Shoots his first 11 right there. Yeah. Eleven. Nice, good, good recovery. Now we should note here in their anchor, they have no peep sight like we've been seeing in compounds. He's using the no. string to line that up with his sight, whatever kind of aperture he's running. Yeah. Like I was saying earlier, alignment is so important for the recurvers, and I'm sure lining Nine. up your string with your All right. scope is just nice as shooting, important guys. as that too. Congratulations. And uh, let's come over here and talk to Junso a little bit. So what's your training like? How many arrows are you shooting now versus, let's say, this summer when we're heavy into training? Um, I would say I shoot about, like, twice more in the summer. Yeah, than, how many arrows is that? Um, well, in the summer, I would shoot about, like, five to 600. And, like, during break, so off-season, probably, like, one to 200. Okay. And how many pounds on your fingers? 47. 47 pounds on his fingers, five to 600 arrows a day. How many days a week? Uh, it's seven days a week. Seven days a week. Gives you the, uh, an idea of the dedication that it takes to uh, get to the elite level shooting an Olympic recur. 
it is not for the faint-hearted, I can tell you that personally. Um, let's talk about your setup here. Looks like you're shooting a new Hoyt uh, Formula XI bow with uh, Velos bamboo carbon limbs, shooting an Excel sight and an Excel aperture, a biter plunger, and what rods are those? Uh, these are Ramrod Ultra V3s. Okay, that's a brand new model, Ramrod stabilizer out of California, and a shrewd V-bar. Uh, let me see, what tab? It's a win and win tab and Easton X10 arrows. Very good. Okay, let's see where our scores are. Looks like a one point match, 29, 28. One point match here, Junsa O comes in and is one point better than Ben, so it's early in the match. Anything can happen from here. It's kind of mind blowing sometimes to listen to these guys talk about how many arrows they shoot a day. I can't imagine. Ten. I think he mentioned he does half. He does twice as much in the summer, so I'm sure while he's going to school that he doesn't shoot as much in the fall and the spring semesters. But oh five yeah, five to six hundred arrows a day at 47 pounds is just kind of mind blowing. And if you don't do that in recurve, you just don't have a chance. Yeah, you're not going to compete if you don't have that kind of. Eleven. Nice shot there. I've always believed recurve shooters have so much more of a commitment sometimes than a compound because it takes so much precision. All that muscle strength. Like you, could, you would see some of the compound guys shaking a little bit, Six. holding a fraction of this. And there, he even he just had a bobble there and threw it up into the blue, a six. But Yeah, Ben looked like he was struggling maybe to expand there just a little bit in that last shot. I'm not sure if fatigue may have been getting to him, nerves. Right, so on the front of his bow there, just hey. saw. All right. I will go after Rob first. Again, they're, they're under a lot of pressure here on their fingers. Junsa, if I can, what is going through your mind or what mentally are you trying to do as you're uh, up here on stage or shooting? Um, well, right now I'm just trying to get through my shot process and hope that I don't hold too long. Okay, so the importance of trusting your process and staying aggressive so that your timing doesn't get long is extremely critical. Very good. All right, looks like we'll uh, check the scores here at the halfway point. Got a 61-51 match with Junsa holding the lead. Got an adjustment here we're Waiting making to monitor adjustment here. Monitor adjustment in front of Ben Hur. All right, so um, Caleb, as we were talking about here, you were talking about expansion. Mm -hmm. uh, so if we can get a shot here of an arrow coming to the very edge of the clicker, as you were mentioning, when they come to full draw, like Junes is going to do here, his arrow point is going to go right to the edge of that clicker. And then he's going to expand into the shot. Yep. And that clicker lets him know when he's through it. Uh, so that's a very unique. There we can see Ben's clicker out front there. Heard the click. He fires the arrow. Yeah, that's one of the, ver the very precise things about recurve archery is that you have to have your arrows cut exactly Eleven. the right length to be able to get that clicker customization to you as an archer. So compound. There's that clicker shot again. So compound, you come to a back wall and you can't draw any farther. Yep. This recurve, I mean, technically, he could pull that to the back of his head if he wants. Yeah, the recurve, they don't have any kind of stops or anything like that. They can, they can go as far back as they can, which is really important for your expanding like we were talking about. Um, and if he expands ten. too much, that changes where it hits. Yep, you're not All gonna right, be sighted in if you hand. expand way too much. All right, let's go to Rob. I noticed, Junsa, that you're shooting the X-10 arrow, which is normally the arrow we shoot outdoors at 70 meters. Uh, why do you choose to continue shooting those indoors? Um, well, I tried using the fat shaft arrows, and like the tuning really didn't match with me. And also, I just didn't like the way it shot. Okay. So you find the, the arrow you're shooting is more accurate. That's why you're shooting it, of course. Very good. Okay, excellent. Let's look at where we are at the three-quarter point. 
with one end to go. We've got a 92-78 match. That's 14 points. Anything can happen, though, shooting recurve. These guys are under a lot of pressure, and it is very tough uh, to do what they do, believe me. All right, so as Rob mentioned, 14-point lead for June Soho. That's a pretty healthy lead going into the last end. He's probably just trying not to do anything stupid. Yeah, one of the <laughs> cool things about this particular tournament is uh, I think anywhere else that Olympic recurvers go to shoot, they're going to have set points. Right. And here they're going on a total score in a match. Yes. Which I'm sure is a mental adjustment for these guys because they it puts more emphasis on every single arrow, I feel like. Absolutely. In the set system, you can have a bad arrow and, okay, that set I didn't win. I'll just make it up in the next one. But here, like you said, every arrow counts. Right. Nine, nine so I'm, put, I'm sure that puts a lot more stress for them to think about mentally right now, which is another, another good reason to have a strong mental game, especially in this class. Ben Hur coming in for his final arrow. Nine-eight liner, liner, all right, let's go okay. out to Rob for the win. It winner. looks like, uh, Ben, you've given it a great run. Certainly had a great match in the last one uh, against Joseph. But it looks like you're going to end up with third place for $350. Not a bad payday. Let's give it up. Ben Hur. Okay. If we can get zoomed up on that target, uh, if you look at that target face of June says, don't take it down yet, Troy. Uh, there we go, step aside. Look at that target. That is all 11s. Let's give that, let's give it up for the accuracy of June Sa Oh, nice shooting, buddy. That's sweet. Okay, next competitor, our number one qualifier from Brooklyn, New York. Shooting for six years, 2019 LAS Classic Champion, 2017 Indoor and Outdoor Champion, Dallas Jones from Brooklyn. <laughs> Dallas, buddy, you shooting first or second? First. And left or right? Right. right. Shooting first, right stage. Take your place, Dallas. All right, so we're back here. Dallas Jones, yes, 2019 Classic Champion, and Dallas Jones is a beast. I remember, I remember watching Dallas shoot last year. He oh put yeah. on a good show in this shoot down. He, of course, is shooting the fatter arrows. Might be a 23, but he is a force. Yep. 11. And he's right off the gate right there, yep. coming out and just throwing down an 11. 11. 11. Right back to it. Yeah. 11. Oh, Pinwell. man. <laughs> Dallas just looks so strong in his form and his shot execution. Yeah. He's a big kid. He's a strong kid. Um, Nine low. He is one that we're definitely going to be watching for he the Olympics in the future. Yeah, he looks like he has a little bit more of an open stance compared to the other shooters we've seen so far. 11, perfect 33. How's that for starting out? I mean, that, that's a good way to start right there. <laughs> Throwing down a 33 is not easy to do, especially with a Olympic recurve, but he, look, he made not it look left. easy right there. <laughs> All right, Rob's hey, probably going to get some ahead. information. Dallas, you came out a rocking, man. 33, congratulations. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Um, I'm going to brag on Dallas a little bit here. Dallas uh, is from Brooklyn, New York, uh, the middle of the city. And let me tell you, he, he and his family go through a lot in order for him to train. Uh, it's hours for him to get to an indoor range or an outdoor range. Uh, the commitment that this young man has for the sport is unequaled. I've never seen anyone, or a family for that matter, that has the commitment to train and to be the best there is than the Jones family. Uh, let's, let's give Dallas and his family a shout out. Okay, 
After the first end, we have a four-point lead, 33-29. Dallas leads. So as Rob was mentioning there, I believe if I remember correctly, he, I mean, he lives in Brooklyn. Yeah. Where, where are you going to get archery range there? He yeah. travels about two hours one way to get to where he trains and does that every day. That says a whole lot about his commitment. Absolutely. 11. Just snuck that one in there. The way da the way I've ever seen Dallas shoot is, I just feel like he could co he come into the regular recurve class, not just the youth class, and he sure. he give those guys a run for their money. He probably could. <laughs> he's 17, so next year he's going to have to. Yeah, it's not a bad guy to have behind you as you're coaching the box during one of these matches either. Oh yeah. Ten. Let's Jack get a shot of uh, Dallas's coach there if the camera pans over. Jack Williams, <laughs> currently number two in the U.S. Heading 11. into the Olympic trials. And we'll see him tomorrow yep. in the men's recurve finals. If I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure Jack won this competition last year. He did. Took down the mighty giant Brady Ellison. Yep. <laughs> Anytime that you can do that, you're, it's saying something. <laughs> Dallas putting on a show. June to O, though. No slouch. 10 11. Nine, just out. Got a nine there. I mean. He's fully capable of hitting every 11, just Absolutely. like he showed in the last one. Jack Williams is in his coach's box. Jack, uh, things are looking pretty good. He seems to uh, have come right into it. Yeah, we were practicing over there, and he got all sighted in, ready to come out here, see what, can we, see what we can do. Okay, very good. Dallas, I'm going to give you a second to swig on that drink, but uh, I'd like to get an idea of your training schedule and how much weight you're holding on your fingers. Okay. Uh, I shoot... Now, about four days a week because of school, it's getting really heavy. Um, draw weight, I pull around 54, 55, somewhere around there. 54 or 55 pounds on his fingers. And how many arrows did you say you're shooting? Uh, around each day, hope at minimum 200. 200 minimum a day. And in the spring during the peak? Uh, spring, we try to at least get in 400, 500 a day. Again, uh, five days a week. Four five days a week. Again, 54 or 55 pounds on his fingers. And Dallas, you're 17 years old? Uh, 16. I'm 16. He's 16 years old. Let's give it up for Dallas Jones once again. <laughs> Just to remind everyone, you have Dallas Jones shooting against world record holder June So Oh. So you have two elite future Olympians, hopefully, uh, here shooting against each other. 65 59, six point match. So 16, Dallas is. I was off by a year. He's got another year in youth recurve. Yeah, <laughs> another year for him to come in and wreak havoc <laughs> for these guys. Here, Jack giving him some advice behind. Look at that stabilizer. No move. Doesn't move no. whatsoever. Oh, a little bobble there out into the nine. Shook his head there when Jack talked to him a little bit, so I'm sure he, he kind of understood what happened there with his form maybe a little uh. bit. Yeah, there's so much that can happen between your bow arm and your fingers and pulling through the shot. There are many, many factors that can affect how things happen yeah, down the There he's back on track. Yep. And again, that 11 ring's about the size of a nickel. Yep. Dallas just looks so comfortable and confident up there right now. 11, Finland. And really, with the way he's shooting, I don't blame him. I would be, too. <laughs> June to oh, coming back with an 11. Now he's smiling, Junsa is. He's probably getting a little more relaxed. Yeah. 11. Not much you can do when the other guy's shooting like that. 10, just out. Oh, just Je out. Just out. Those skinny hey, arrows make him miss just a few shots there, but wow. yep, they're still giving him more forgiveness. All right, let's go to Rob. Dallas, if we can, I'll go over your uh, setup here. You're shooting a Hoyt uh, Formula XI riser with a Formula Special Weight in the bottom of it to give you a little bit more uh, bottom weight. Uh, True Ball or an Excel sight, a Biter Plunger, shooting uh, Ramrod stabilizers, and what tab and arrows are you shooting? I'm shooting Brady Ellison tab. Brady Ellison tab from Excel, very good. And Easton X7 arrows. Well, you're doing a great job here, both of you are. 
with one end to go. It's 96-89, seven point differential. Dallas has a lead. All right, so you heard Rob talk about this tab that Dallas is using, Brady Ellison tab from Excel. It's this unique new finger tab that Brady helped design. He was having issues with his fingers. So he designed this and it, it has a unique material in the layers of this tab that it's a proprietary material. He said it's very thin. Mm -hmm. He can feel the string, but yet it doesn't hurt his fingers. So yeah. it's a incredible new product out from Brady. That's a, that's an Excel. I'm sure anything that he can give you a leg up, not feeling as much weight on your fingers, every shot is going to help tremendously. Absolutely. And that, that tab is really customizable too. Yes. Cheek plate, yeah, the finger spacer, uh, there's all kind of things you can you can adjust on it. You can see a little shake there in his arm. Nine, Just throws it out of the tin ring a little bit. Shooting against somebody like Dallas right here, you can't really afford to have too many of those. No. Ten. Last arrow, Junsa. Eleven. Eleven. Nice good way to end. A really quick shot, but it was it was good. <laughs> Rob's gonna go out there and talk to our winner. It looks like you've got five hundred and fifty dollars for second place. Heck of a run. Nice job. I hope you'll be back next year. I sure will. Okay, we look forward to watching you. Uh, you'll be able to follow both of these guys uh, through their journey on uh, USA Archery's website and whatnot. Uh, they're, they're pretty regularly in the news. Congratulations, Junsa. Give Junsa a hand. <laughs> Dallas, man, you killed it. Making mom proud. Hopefully, hopefully. It's her birthday tomorrow, so this is a nice gift. Yes, it is. Dallas will take home a $1,000 payout. Let's give it up for Dallas Jones. So Dallas Jones, two-time Lancaster Archery Classic champion, uh, youth male recurve. Awesome to see that. You heard a shout out for New York City there. Yeah. I uh, think it was really, really tells a lot about that match. Dallas didn't shoot under a 32. That's incredible. All right, Caleb, so we're going to take a quick break here, commercial break, and we'll be back here with the youth female recurve. Coming right up. From the world's most challenging archery tournaments to the bow hunter's heart pounding moment of truth, America's best bowstrings are designed to improve your bow's performance. With rigorous product testing and extreme attention to detail, experience the best custom threads on the planet, and you'll understand why we say peace of mind is priceless. announcing the new patent-pending CarboFlax stabilizers. A biocomposite blend of carbon and flax. Flax plant yields a natural fiber with very advanced properties. Flax offers three times the vibration dampening of glass and 20% more than carbon. Natural composites are up to 15% lower weight than carbon fiber. Trueball Excel, we make archery better. That's a good feeling to know I can make this bow do whatever I want it to do and it will react. This thing is just so much more stable and uh, it 
just control the arrow so well. Coolest part about it is all you need is a Torx wrench and a couple of Allen wrenches, and you can just stand there on a line. You don't have to run and put it in the press, move those shims. This, this is a dream to work with.